prophecies had been made over the years that the Messiah, God's Son, was to come into the world. He was expected, longed for, and when it seemed that he was not going to come, there were those who gave up hope that he would ever arrive. However, God had his plan worked out, and as it happened, he sent his angel messenger, Gabriel, to a small village in Galilee, a town called Nazareth. There in that town, there lived a young woman named Mary, who was engaged to a man named Joseph. Suddenly one day, the angel appeared before Mary and said, Don't be afraid, for God loves you dearly. That is why he has chosen you to bear a son, and you will call him Jesus. He will be great and will be known as the Son of the Most High. The Lord God will give him the throne of his forefather David, and he will be king over the people of Jacob forever. His reign will never end. Mary had trouble realizing all that this meant, which led her to say, How can this be? For I am not married to Joseph, only engaged. The Holy Spirit of God will come upon you, and all that I've said will be realized for you. Slowly, the truth filled her mind and heart, and she realized that God had selected her to be the means whereby the promises of the ages would become a reality. In a spirit of joyful obedience, she answered, Here am I. I am the Lord's servant. Let it be as you have spoken. And with this answer of obedience, the angel left her. At this particular time in history, Rome ruled the world, and Roman legions were to be seen everywhere. Obedience to the will of Emperor Caesar Augustus was to be done without question. Roman trumpets sounded the news that a new edict had been issued by the emperor. His heralds proclaimed, Hear ye, hear ye, by order of his imperial highness, Caesar Augustus, all the inhabitants of the land under the control of Rome will present themselves in the cities from which their families came in order to be counted for new taxes. No one will attempt to evade this count, for the penalties will be high. This order will be carried out without fail. To obey this order, it was necessary for Joseph to take Mary with him from Nazareth and journey to Bethlehem, the home of David, because he was a direct descendant of David. While there, and register for the tax, Mary gave birth to her firstborn, to her son. One of the lowliest jobs of the day was that of being a shepherd. In spite of that, the shepherds of Bethlehem faithfully guarded their flocks, even by night. Some of them stood guard, while others warmed themselves at the campfire. In an instant, these men were startled and terrified as a marvelous light filled the sky around them. At that moment, an angel of the Lord stood before them and said, Don't be afraid. I have good news for you. This very day in David's town, a Savior has been born for you. He is the Christ, the Messiah, the Lord. This will prove it to you. You will find the baby wrapped up and lying in a manger. As the angel finished the message, a heavenly host sang praises to God. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace, good will toward humanity. With their mission accomplished, the angels left the shepherds at their fire. These men looked at each other in amazement as the impact of this message began to be understood. They said, Let's go to Bethlehem and see this thing which the Lord has now told us. 
the shepherds hurried down the hillside toward the village of Bethlehem. And there, in a crude shelter, they found the baby just as the angels said they would. In that place with the animals looking on, the shepherds found that they could not contain themselves, but told Mary and Joseph about their experience on the hillside and the message they had received from the angels. Mary's heart was warmed with this news, and she treasured all the shepherds told her. Then the shepherds returned to their flocks with a deep joy because of what they had heard and seen. About this time there appeared in Jerusalem at the palace of King Herod some wise men from the eastern countries. They had seen a wonderful star and they connected the appearance of the star with the stories they had heard of a king who was to be born. What would be a better place to look for a newborn king than a palace? Herod was very upset over such news. He called the chief priests and scribes and asked for an answer to such a situation. For their answer, they referred him to a prophet, Micah, who had said, And thou, Bethlehem, land of Judah, art in no wise least among the princes of Judah. For out of thee shall come forth a governor, who shall be a shepherd of my people Israel. Herod passed this along to the wise men, and asked that they come back and report to him when they had found the child. Once again they saw the star that had guided them, and so it was that they came to Bethlehem, directly to the house where they found the child, with his mother, Mary. They were filled with awe and wonder, and as they came forward, they knelt in adoration and gave him their gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. The men then received a warning in a dream that they should not go back to Herod, so they went home another way. When the wise men had left, Joseph was also warned in a dream that Herod planned on killing the child. A place of safety for them would be in the land of Egypt. Immediately, Joseph took Mary and the infant Jesus and left for Egypt. They would be safe from Herod's plans. This is the old but ever new story of the way in which God in human form in Jesus Christ came into the world for us. Isn't it rather significant that he whose birth was announced first of all to lowly shepherds should one day speak of himself as the good shepherd who knew his sheep and whose sheep knew him? Jesus also said, If anyone is thirsty, let him come to me and drink. For the scriptures declare that rivers of living water shall flow from the inmost being of anyone who believes in me. What a wonderful offer and message comes to us again. May the deep abiding joy and peace of the real meaning of Christmas be yours. May we feel that joy and may we feel it even now as we hear the choir express it in the beloved Moravian hymn. Sing hallelujah, praise the Lord. Mm -hmm. 